Hello and welcome back to my channel. I would like to introduce to you freelance clarinetist extraordinaire Mark Lewin. That's sweet. Hi, Ron. Today we're going to be getting into drag and then playing duets or something like that. Sounds right. We'll be just chatting and talking about classical music and nerding out and putting on a bunch of makeup. We're gonna have a good time. I'm gonna shave my beard and we'll go from there. <laughs> All right, so now that I look like a crazy alien, I have blocked my brows. Yeah, we'll see where we go from here. <laughs> I haven't seen my face in a really long time. I think I should have shown you guys what it looked like with the brows. <laughs> I don't really do drag much anymore these days. I was telling Mark, I think the last time I got in drag was like fully 2019. So it's been a hot second. Mark has been practicing. <laughs> I have. This is my um, new pandemic pastime. Quarantine queen. Quarantine queen. Quarant queen? Quarant queen. She's beautiful from the waist off. I wanted to ask you about your uh, musical journey. Yeah. Um, so you started, you didn't have like the most traditional trajectory of classical musicians. Oh my gosh, that's so true. So I played all throughout high school, but I never really thought about music as a serious pursuit. I wasn't um, taking lessons. No. I didn't have like a great relationship with the music program that I was in. And I just sort of thought, yeah, this is enjoyable, but, you know, I'm not going to make a, a go of this when I go to university. And I kind of gradually found my way back through playing in different, you know, indie bands and singing in a church choir. And eventually, yeah, I just realized that uh, this is probably what I, not this, <laughs> music is probably what I, what I should, should be doing. So I had my very first clarinet lesson at like 21. And, uh, That's crazy. Yeah, it's really interesting like when people have these like non-traditional like starts. Like even me, like I started out my undergrad as a double major with computer science. Right, yeah, yeah, I remember you telling me that. So, you know, sometimes we take a little second to find our way. Mm -hmm. And I also started oboe quite late. Um, oh yeah, how old were you when you started playing? I was 14. Oh wow, okay. I want to do like a little, like a lightning round. Yeah, 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 okay. Of, like, I'll name a composer, mm -hmm. and then you have to say your favorite piece by that composer. Okay. Uh, Beethoven. Hmm. Probably the fourth symphony. Strauss. Four last songs. Unless you meant the other Strauss. <laughs> As if. No one ever means the other Strauss. <laughs> Dvorak. Can it be a three-way tie between symphonies seven, eight, and nine? No. Okay, then um, the eighth symphony. Oh. Were you not expecting that? No. Valerie Coleman. Portraits of Josephine. Oh my gosh, it's such a great woodwind quintet. It's basically like her tone poem homage to uh, Josephine Baker. And it's really fun, just like kind of kinetic, um, nostalgic. It's a gorgeous piece. I actually performed that um, with my woodwind quintet right before the world shut down. <laughs> that was my last concert. What was like your favorite gig that you've ever done? Oh gosh, um, I think that's probably one of the first ones. I played with Symphony Nova Scotia when I was just finishing my undergrad and considering you know, my journey and, and how far I felt I had to go. Um, it was such a nice moment to, for at least a few hours, be colleagues with all of these musicians that I'd looked up to for so many years who, you know, kind of nurtured me as I was really just starting out. Mm -hmm. That's really sweet. It was lovely. It was a wonderful experience. Yeah, it's such a good feeling when like you're a student as a musician and you like get the chance to like cross over and be like colleagues with your teachers and stuff like that absolutely that is such like uh, a validating feeling that's exactly the word 
especially in classical music, there is a lot of like, you know, I don't want to say like worship, but like, you know, we do tend to put our teachers on a pedestal. Totally. But you can't be looking for external validation. You have to find it within yourself. I wish someone had said that to me when I was 20. Because if you can't love your own playing, how can anyone else like it? <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> can I get an A? Uh, <laughs> Up in here? Uh, is that an A? You were pretty close. Uh, I'll, you know what? I'll, I would change that. I sang an A. That's close enough. That's what I said! What was the best advice you got about having a career in music? Um, I think, be patient. So true, amen. Like, I think especially our generation, we have grown accustomed to things happening very fast, um, and there's really no shortcut. You really just have to put the, put the time in, put the years in. Allow yourself to take as long as you need, and as cheesy as it sounds, just don't give up. Like, so true. Just keep going. That's what I was telling myself when I put this eyebrow on. <laughs> what do you hope will be different when we eventually return to, you know, whatever normal we're going to be returning to? Uh, just in terms of your career, your experience as a musician, the industry, anything. I hope that there are some significant changes in terms of like inclusivity in classical music. Absolutely. I think that we're like kind of a lot of people are like waking up to the fact that it can be like a really elitist kind of vibe. And I do have like high hopes for that. And I think that the new generation um, that's in music school now are so like emotionally intelligent and are gonna like help lead the charge I along with us right. millennials absolutely so i think the duet that we'll be reading is by marion bauer okay and for those of you who don't know her this is a great introduction let's read about her biography yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to hear more, because I, to be honest, I'm not super familiar. She was, she looks like my grandmother. I'm not even kidding. She actually looks like my grandmother. So she was born in 1882 and died in 1955, and she was an American composer, teacher, writer, and music critic. She played an active role in shaping American musical identity in the early half of the 20th century. Take note, she was an influencer before influencers were influencers. She was on faculty at NYU. Oh, cool. That's amazing. Yeah, where she taught music history and composition. Um, in addition to her position at NYU, Bauer was affiliated with Juilliard as guest lecturer until her death. That's incredible. She's like an American uh, Boulanger. Totally. Throughout her life, Bauer promoted not only her own work, but new music in general. She helped found the American Music Guild, the oh American Music Center, and the American Composers Alliance. That's really cool. I, that's an amazing, what an accomplished person. I know, and it's like, so many people have not even heard of her. And she has this cute little piece for Momo and Clarinet, a little duo. I'm looking forward to playing it with you. All right, we're all in full makeup, and we are gonna get changed and play a little duet for you. Let's like clap and then transition, and when we clap, it'll okay. be like we change outfits. Okay, three, two, one. Ta da! Where am I? What year is it?
thank you so much for watching today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Fun. Thank you so much for having me. This was kind of thrilling, and this is the first time that I've played music with another human being in quite a while, so it yeah. was exhilarating. If you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to me here on YouTube. You can find my Instagram at BarkMaluin. Uh, come check me out. I post videos of my practicing, musings, and uh, glamorous selfies. Thank you once again, and have a great day. Bye.